Hey there, good evening. Welcome to Prog Monster. My name's Murph. I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock, hard rock, heavy metal, and other forms of rock music. So it's Friday Night Live Experience. Now, I'm going to be a bit different tonight than I normally am. I'm not doing a concert online and I'm not doing an album. I'm going to be talking about a particular experience I had in keeping with uh, my Monday and Wednesday night uh, theme, which is Triumph. We will talk about Triumph again tonight on the Friday Night Live. So uh, I've maybe been to 15, I've tried to figure this out one time, 12 or 15 concerts in my life. Maybe it's a little bit more, I'm not sure. But Triumph was definitely two of those concerts. Once at Maple Leaf Gardens for the Just a Game Tour, which occurred, I think, in in around Christmas or just into the new year um, of 1980, and that was at Maple Leaf Gardens. Um, and I do believe this was one of the first concerts I went to. I might be I might be wrong here. The other concert took place at the CNE Grandstand, and I believe it was during the Allied Forces tour, so it might have been 1982, 83 summer anyways outdoor venue uh, same kind of location that i was at for the david bowie concert there um, i did see robert plant there as well but i was on the complete opposite side of the field looking the other way so experience was very different from that position okay so anyways i had a friend uh, working at the place i worked at for the ontario jockey club and uh he got tickets to see um, Triumph at the Grandstand and he knew that I was a big fan of them because I'd already gone and seen them at uh, Maple Leaf Gardens uh, during the Just a Game Tour. At that point in time during the Just a Game Tour they were fairly new to me but I was blown away by Rick Emmett's amazing guitar playing. Uh, he was all, all over the place. The guy is like a rock god. You know, that long blonde hair and the tight pants and the tank top and the flying B guitar and the solos and just that voice as well. And he was all over the place too. He clearly the leader of the band, I think, at the time. At least that's my perception of it. And they played, of course, all of the songs from their Rock and Roll Machine album pretty much and uh, a lot of stuff from the just having been released just a game album which i was right into that turned out eventually to be my favorite album of all time until recently when it was bypassed by sticks but anyways um uh, i really enjoyed that concert um if concerts had all been like that i probably would have still kept going but uh, some of the stuff i seen later was darker and a lot louder and heavier and uh, my ears just couldn't take it and i didn't want to risk it so i just never win again however the concert at the cne grandstand we were uh, a little bit further away but once again they were just amazing you know now i'm trying to remember i was thinking about this earlier i was trying to remember if i saw bowie and the opening band was teenage head or i saw triumph and the opening band was teenage head i want to say it was triumph because there was a bit of a contrast but not as great a contrast as there would have been with Bowie so um, anyways uh, I thought Triumph was great on that um, this was when I started I had been listening to them more and gotten into more of their music and started to realize how good a singer Gil Moore was so um, I was no longer in complete awe of being at a rock concert because I'd been to several by this time quite a bit actually by this time that was during my 78 79 80 81 82 83 84 so about five years i eight years i listened i went to concerts but by this point in time in 83 i'd already been to a dozen or more and uh, the guy i went with he had a great camera i took some fantastic shots of the stage and i actually have one of them somewhere a picture of rick emmett um with his guitar flying B that he loved to play. Um, so, you know, the concert was fantastic. They did a lot of the stuff I liked, plus some of the new stuff. Um, I thought Nature Child and 
I Live for the Weekend were great tracks that they played from the new album, Allied Forces at the time. I think those were two from there. I could be wrong. I, I get Progressions of Power and Allied Forces mixed up sometimes. Uh, maybe it was Fight the Good Fight and Ordinary Man or Fight the Good Fight and I Live for the Weekend. Anyways, they played all those songs and they were fantastic. Um, the guy is amazing amazing guitar player maybe one of the very best i've ever seen um i'm trying to think of somebody else who impressed me more and i'm not saying that like i saw i saw steve howe obviously and i saw uh tony iomi and i saw alex lifeson so i saw a lot of really good guitar players but for some reason i guess his stage presence was dominating and his guitar playing was dominating and i think um I don't think he was any. I don't think he's any better than Alex Lifeson. I think actually it's probably the other way around. However, um, Alex Lifeson has to compete with Geddy Lee and Neil Peart on the stage, so he's not as doesn't appear to be as dominating. Where I think uh, nothing take nothing away from Mike Levine and Gil Moore's abilities, but I don't think they're in the same ballpark as this guy. Anyways, um, I thought Mike. Uh, Gil Moore was like fantastic his voice is fantastic um, the concert was great and, and I believe they were on stage both times for over an hour and a half so that's a pretty lengthy time and especially coming from a time period where pretty much everybody had a backup band somebody would play before them I, I can't remember somebody just coming on stage and playing from the start to finish like they do in some of the later days Rush does this a lot they're not as much of a backup bands anymore they tend to just play their own because they a lot of them now have such a volume of material that you know they can play for longer where back then and they don't play as many concerts anymore like back in those days they're playing 265 gigs a year so they couldn't be on stage for three hours every night or they'd be exhausted so they had backup bands and stuff so then the backup bands kind of you know disappeared a bit with some of the larger bands because they had such material and they were only doing 35 shows a year so they like to play longer and get all their material out there anyways uh the concert was great the stage show was fantastic there was it was pretty packed house probably over twenty thousand. anyways if they see any grandstand the funniest part about um triumph is that both venues i saw them at no longer exist cne grandstands long gone maple leaf gardens is long gone and eh. but i still have the memories of both concerts uh, the acoustics at maple leaf gardens were really good and made the concert sound really close up but not too loud either where at the cne i think the concert was probably louder but not as uh, the acoustics weren't as good they call they used to call that place the mistake by the lake <laughs> and well now it's been erased and they put a new ballpark up uh at the sky dome which eventually became rogers center and maple leaf gardens is gone now except for a small bit of it and um the leafs and raptors and them are all playing down at the acc uh and i don't even know if it's called that anymore either so these that's the the wave of the the future right everybody is every time a new ownership takes over they change the name of a stadium and it's always got to be some corporate name it's not like it once was the wrigley fields of the world are gone you know anyways um so the concerts were really good i thought gilmore played really well on the drums and the outdoor thing but a hair blowing around too was kind of catchy uh, my one thing about triumph is that mike levine used to be a regular where i worked i think i believe he owned horses actually at least he owned standard bread so i would see him at greenwood all the time and i never did actually say anything to him i was about far too shy of a kid back then and but he was um he was the guy who produced their albums and uh kind of the leader that way in the band whereas um i think the uh, other two did most of the other stuff so uh anyways triumph great great band to see live 
I, I do believe they've toured recent years too. I don't know. I'd have to go and look. But um, if it's the original three, it'd be worth going to see. I know they did. Sorry. They did do some concerts with a Stephen X. Am I wrong? Stephen X. I, I want to say Stephen X. Anyways, that was after Rick Emmett left the band. But um, they never did reform, I don't think, until maybe they've done a few off, one-off concerts or something like that. Um, but they were great in their day. They were the quintessential rock band. Like, they had all the elements, the long hair, the loud music, the great vocalists, the good-looking um, guitar player who was fantastic, you know. Anyways, uh, and there you have it, so... Uh, I just wanted to reminisce about my two times to go see Triumph. I don't get to do this often because I haven't seen a lot of the people I do. But since it was a Triumph week, I thought, you know what? Rather than go on with a, a Triumph album that's live or go on with a concert that's on on uh, the internet that I think is, is a particularly good one, and there's a couple, I decided just to go back to my old experiences with... Um, going to the live concert. I don't I really don't think there's anything to substitute for live concerts. You know. Yeah, the studio albums are great and live albums are great and and seeing them live on a video is great, but there's something to be had for going to a live concert that cannot be replaced by any other other uh method. However, you know, sometimes you just can't do what you want to do. And so I have to enjoy it a little bit different way. But for all of you people, if you ever get a chance to see Triumph, go see them. Even if they're old, they're still probably fairly good. Anyways, I like, uh, I hope you like this video. And I hope you uh, subscribe. Tell me what your experiences, if you've had any, with seeing Triumph live. If you can, that'd be great. Anyways, have a good evening, and uh, I wish you the best. Frog Monster out.